All right, in this video, we are going to talk about if-then statements in KLWP, and we're also going to talk about using uh, greater than symbols, less than symbols, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. We're going to talk about not equal to, um, and we're going to do all this with some dynamically changing colors. Uh, this first one we have up here, yellow if day, blue if night. Basically, since the sun is up, the sun is risen, this statement right here will always be yellow as long as it's daylight or at least the sun is risen. And once the sun sets, this thing will turn blue. Now, I can't show you that right now because I'm in the middle of the day. And if I try to you know, go to my settings and change my time, um, this program that I'm showing you the cell phone on acts crazy and it just cuts off. So I don't feel like doing that. But I promise you, once this goes tonight, uh, this whole thing up here turns blue. Now, I'll show you that one first. So I'm going to go into KOWP, not my camera. All right. And here is that one right here. So there's text. The code for the actual, there's no code there. I'm just saying yellow if day, blue if night. This is for demonstration purposes. However, for paint, notice I do have a code right there. Now let me explain. Some of you probably know how to do a basic if then. Um, I still want to uh, come over here and show you how it works because some of these are going to get a little bit more advanced. Now, things to take note of. Dollar symbols at both ends of my code. Um, parentheses have to line up like this one here matches up with this one way over here uh, these two pair up these two right here pair up and then these two right here pair up so you have to have the same number of parentheses now this right here is our original statement so if AI is day equals one and I've talked about this in other videos basically this is saying if it's day, if daylight is equal to one when daylight is equal to 1, that means that the sun has risen and it's daytime. If this was 0, it would be nighttime. However, what I'm telling, here's the statement. If the daylight is equal to 1, basically, if it is daylight, I want to have a color of yellow. If it's not, I want to have a color of blue. And you have to separate each little piece here. See, these commas, it's important that you put those there as well. So let's think about it. If then statements, you want to say if, use your parentheses correctly, and you have some statement. Now, this statement will not change. Basically, I'm saying, okay, if daylight, if is day is equal to one, if that is true, the first thing you put after that comma is what it's going to return. And since I'm in a color preference, KOWP will say, you know, must return a valid color. Well, since I already have a global variable of yellow set up in my global variables, it's going to return a yellow. If it's false, after you put that comma, you want to put what you want it to do. If this statement here is false, you want it to return this. That's a basic if-then statement. Now, what I should show you too, let me back up. I'm going over to my globals. As you can see, I do have several globals down here. I have a yellow and I have a blue. Now, I could easily go back into here. Um, I'm going against what the sentence says yellow if day, blue if night, but if I just come in here and swap these, if I say, okay, I'll, if it is one, I want it to return a GV blue. If it's not one, I want it to return a GV yellow. What that's going to do there is it's going to change. See, notice how that changed up there. But obviously, you know, just talking for sake of day, I mean, you probably want a yellow or a bright color. Um, you could even, you don't have to do this for is day. That, you know, that code right there, is day, you could say um, if, if the, whatever the forecast, you could bring in other statements. You don't have to use is day. You could talk about a forecast. If the forecast is clear, maybe you want it to be a yellow color. If it's foggy, maybe you want it to be a gray. If it's raining, you want it to be blue. And you can do a whole bunch of different things. And with that in mind, that's what I want to talk about next. You can have multiple things going on inside of an if-then statement. Um, okay, I have a component here. It's my cell phone signal. I've done a video on this, but I've done it slightly different for the sake of this video. I have two globals inside of my component, basically a green if I have a signal and a red if I don't have a signal. Now let me copy this code over. So I'm going to go to the code, and the code for this one, since I'm doing a progress bar, it's going to be um, the actual bars themselves. So let me copy this. All 
And let me see if I can make this small enough to where you can see the whole thing, but yet still see it. Um, make sure you're watching in HD. Now notice a lot of parentheses and all that stuff. So we have a statement right here. If the signal is equal to zero or, notice that straight bar, that straight bar, or if the signal is equal to five, I want to return a value of 99. Now here's why we're returning a value of 99. Um, I didn't have to pick 99 here. Back out of my keyboard. I didn't have to pick 99, but since I have five bars, we're breaking this up into increments of 20. From zero to 20, um, it will be one bar. From 21 to 40, it will be two bars. From 41 to 60, three bars. From 61 to 80, four bars. From 81 to 100, it will be five bars. I picked 99 because that's somewhere between 81 and 100. Um, but that's full. Now I'll talk about why I want my service to be zero or five and I want all bars to be full in a second. The important thing to note here is combining statements with the or. So if the signal service is zero or five, I want full bars. If it's not true, I want to do another if statement. Well, if the sales service is one, I want to return a one. A one is going to fill up just one bar. Well, what if that's not true? Well, if the sales service is two, I want to return a 21. 21 will fill up two bars. Well, what if that's not true? Notice these commas. I'm putting commas. If this, then this is what I want to happen. If that's not true, well, I want to do another if statement. And I call this like nesting ifs. I think you, that word's used for Excel. But we're nesting a lot of if statements. Look at all these if statements we have nested in here. And basically, I'm covering all my grounds for cell phone service. Cell phone service goes from 0 to 5, I think, for KOWP. So notice I have something for 0 and 5. I want to return a 99. Well, if that's not true, what if it's 1? I want to return a 1, which fills up 1 bar. Well, what if that's not true? What if it's 2? I want to return a 21, which will fill up 2 bars. Well, what if that's not true? What if the cell service is 3? I want to return a 41. 41 is going to fill up that third bar. Well, what if that's not true? What if the service is 4? If it's four, I want to return a 61. That will fill up four bars. Now you may be wondering, okay, why in the world are you going to do full service on a zero when you have zero service? Well, here's another if-then statement. Let me go to color and check out what I have for my color. It's another if-then statement. If the service is zero, I want the color of my bars to be red. If, that, if the service is not zero, I want them to be green. Notice my if if this statement is true, it'll return this. If it's false, it'll return this. So since my cell service is not zero, I'm getting green bars. So that's what's going to distinguish between no service and full service. No service will give me full bars, but those bars will be red. Whereas if I have a cell service of five, it will be full bars, but they will be green because I'm using another if-then statement in my color. A lot of, I mean, it's definitely some critical thinking going on here to get this to work right, but let me show you what happens. I'm going to knock my sales service to zero, and in order to do that, I'm going to put my phone in airplane mode. So when I go into airplane mode, it's going to say the sales service is zero. So it can be this or this. Only one of these have to be true to return a full bar signal, so to speak, or to return full bars colored. Either this one or this one. That's an or statement. Only one of those have to be true. Well, watch what happens. I'm going to have full bars, but remember my color? My color should be red. Bam, there you go. Full bars because of that code. And then I said in my color code, remember that, in my color code I said, if the signal zero, make it red. If it's not zero, make it green. Well, it is uh, red because the signal is zero because I have the phone in airplane mode. So if I cut airplane mode off, I don't know if the advanced editor is going to adjust it on the fly. Let's see if it did. Well, it still shows red here in advanced editor, but I guarantee you if I save this, go back to my home screen, bam, it's back green because my service is not zero. And now last but not least for if then statements, let's get into some greater than, less than stuff. All right, back to my home screen. Now what I've done here with this, Okay, this is zero, 
is, okay, I should show you. I have a text global variable. Now, I'm just doing this to simulate different things that can change. I'm going to simulate it myself. So right now I have a text global variable. I got it called in, and right now it's got a value of zero. That zero here is going to change. Now, that's not, that's not a, a if-then statement, though. Basically, this piece of text that I have here, whatever my global variable, whatever my text global variable in is equal to, it's going to show it. So it could be zero, and now I'm going to show you what else happens. And then I'm going to talk about the if-then. So let me go ahead and save this. I also have these arrows set up. That is an if-then statement, but watch. Okay, one, two, three, four. Whoops, didn't, didn't mean to do that. Okay, three, four, uh, five, six. Notice it's changing colors. Seven, it changed again. Eight, nine, ten, and it goes back to zero. And I can go backwards this way. So there's a couple of if-then statements going on. Basically, I have some if-then statements going on with these little buttons, and then I have if-then statements going on to change the color of this number right here. So let me show you the buttons first. How do I make the zero go to a one, and then to a two, and then to a three? Well, that is going to happen, well, this is the one that's gonna go backwards. Um, I have an if-then statement inside of my touch. So I'm talking about this area. When I touch that, I want it to go backwards. And here's what happens. I want to either go, well, let me show you. Okay, so toggle global switch. I'm toggling that in. That's the only one I have. And here's what the code says. If the global variable in is greater than zero, basically if it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all, anything bigger than zero, I want to take whatever that global, that number is, and I want to subtract 1 from it. For example, suppose the global variable was 5. Well, isn't 5 greater than 0? Yes. So it's going to take that 5 and subtract 1, and it return a 4. Okay. Well, what if it's a 4? Well, we subtract 1 from it, it returns a 3. What if it's 3? Subtracts 1 from it, it returns a 2, and so forth. Now, what if it's not bigger than 0? If it's not bigger than 0, such as 0, it's going to return a 10. And basically what that's allowing me to do is allowing me to tap this button here as many times as I want, and it'll count down by 1. It'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and then it'll start back at 10. That's what that if-then statement right there will do. Well, you may have guessed it. For the other one, this one right here, it works very similar, except when we do this one, I want to add one, and I'm swapping these two numbers. So now if the global variable is less than 10, we want to add one to it, and if it's not less than 10, we want to return a zero. Here's what this will do when we touch. If the number's less than 10, such as if the number's nine, well, that number is less than 10, so it's gonna add one to it, which returns a 10. What if you did it again? Well, if it's at a 10, that is not a true statement anymore, so it's going to reset it back to zero. And it only does this every time you touch it. So let's go back and, and check out that. Um, I ain't talked about the color yet. Let's go back and talk about those two codes again. So here, this number is less than 10. So if I touch this, it should add one to it. That number is still less than 10. So if I touch it, it should add one to it. Still less than 10. And it's going to keep doing this this number is less than 10, so still adding 1, still adding 1. Now, this number is not less than 10, so this is where that false statement comes in. It's going to turn it back to 0, and as you can see, that's what it's doing. And I can do that all day long. Now, this one is saying, okay, if this number is bigger than 0, is this number bigger than 0? Yes, so we're going to subtract 1 from it. Told you. Is this number bigger than 0? Yes, so we're going to subtract 1 from it. Is this number bigger than 0? No, so it's going to set it to 10. And as you can see, that's exactly what it does. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's talk about the colors to finish this thing off. All right, so going to, not there, uh, going to this text, the zero, how is it changing colors and what's making it do that? It's a long if-then statement. And it's a nested if then, nested as in there's multiple if statements inside of here. Notice the parentheses, let me copy and paste. 
uh, and here. let's look this at is the code that I just copied over and before we even interact with this we've already seen what happens but let's see if we can predict or figure out what's going to happen based on this code so if uh, GVN is less than or equal, has, that's, that's how you do less than or equal. So if GVN is less than or equal to 4 and GVN is not equal to 0, exclamation with the equal means not equal, and you have to do it in that order. So if GVN is less than or equal to 4 and GVN is not equal to 0, we want a green. So basically, less than or equal to 4 and not equals not not equal to zero. Both of these have to be true for an and statement. So how about the numbers one, two, three, and four? All of these numbers are less than or equal to four and they're not equal to zero. So one, two, three, and four should be green. Now, what about this one? If GVN is greater than four and GVN is less than seven, we want a purple. So how about five and six only? Because notice what it says. 5 and 6, both of these are greater than 4, and they are less than 7. I don't have a less than or equal, so I don't want to include the 7 in that. Whereas back here, I did include the 4 because of the less than or equal. All right, let's move on to the next one. If GVN is bigger than 7, use orange. So how about 8, 9, and we did go up to 10, as I showed you all ago. But uh, the way I had this set up, I have it to reset. So what are some things that we're missing in here? We are missing um, a zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are missing a seven in this code. So that's what this last thing's gonna do. If none of this stuff works, we want a GV white. So this one should be white. Now obviously I can't do it in white. And the zero should be white. Because according to this long code, there's no condition talking about a zero or a seven. Well, let's look and see if this happens as I change my buttons down here on this. Notice zero is white. So one, two, three, and four should be green. Whoops. I'm just going to use my hand on my cell phone. All right, so there's one green, two is green, three is green, four is green, because that's all meeting that condition. All those numbers are less than or equal to four and not equal to zero, so they should be green. Now, five, six and not seven. Notice five and six are the only ones that were purple because five and six are greater than four and they're less than seven. Notice what seven is. Seven is white because it didn't meet any of these conditions up here. That's why that last thing here, if none of this stuff is true, I want a GV white. And what about eight, nine, ten? Well, those numbers are greater than seven, so we should have an orange for those. Eight, nine, ten. And then remember, if I go back, if I press that arrow again, I'm just pressing that arrow right there. I can go backwards, and these same things are still going to work. Remember, these buttons here only add one, or these buttons subtract one. So there you have it. That's multiple if-then statements. We talked about greater than symbols. We talked about less than symbols. We talked about not equal. Remember, this is not equal. Um, and uh, the or, the or is that straight line. So, you know, you got many things to remember in regards to doing your if-thens. But like I said, KOWP is good about reminding you of certain arguments or if you're missing a parentheses and things like that. But the uh, best way to do this is trial and error. Now, again, how useful is this for you to do what I just did here? Probably not so useful, but, you know, the cell phone signals. Remember how cell phone signal went up to five? You can use a code like this to change these bars to all sorts of different colors. Heck, you don't even have to use numbers. Um, you could do it based on the time of day. You could do it based on the temperature outside. You could do these if-then statements based on the condition, whether it be cloudy, clear, rain, fog. Um, pretty much anyth anything in KOWP, you probably can apply some type of if-then statement to it. And you don't even have to change colors. You could change the size. You could change um, what is actually shown. Um, you can change the words that are displayed. There's so much to do here, but I at least wanted to get across all these symbols of greater than, less than, not equal, uh, dollar signs, and all that stuff. And that is it for this video. Hope it helped.